Welcome to Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. It is episode 474 of the podcast, special holiday edition. And of course, I'm talking about the big day, Rhea Perlman's birthday. Happy Happy birthday, birthday, Rhea. Rhea Perlman. Man, last year was a crazy year. I never thought that I would get to a point where I said, you know who I thought did the best acting job in this big budget Oscar award winning movie? Rhea Perlman. Yeah. The hell? She was in Oppenheimer. She played the bomb. <laughs> she played she played uh uh she played uh Albert Einstein. Yes. It was an amazing performance. So, hello, everybody, and welcome to The Big Shoe. Before we dive right into our Jeff, a.k.a. the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment, brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends, download today. Or if you're a team, T-B-W-M-P-S-B-T-Y-B-R-S-L-D-T for short. Uh, Just a quick programming note. So, originally... We were going to watch, uh, let's see if I can find the playlist while I'm talking. We were going to watch one of my trademark retro drive-in edited B-movies where I add previews and snack bar ads and this and that and other stuff. Um, In a cartoon, we were going to watch the obscure South of the Border uh, Mexican horror movie, Night of a Thousand Cats. And it was about this Lothario guy who picks up women and takes women back to his place where he feeds them to his 1,000 human-eating cats. And we were going to, before the movie, there was going to be a cartoon, a half-hour cartoon called Animal Sports World. That was legit so horrible that you would have tried to kill me, buddy. (laughs) You would have tried to legitimately end my life. If anyone tries to see Animal Sports World, they should 100% only watch it in the episode of Game Grumps where they watch it and make fun of it. It's the only way to watch it and not feel insane. Um, Like, seriously, it's that bad. Uh, but it got me a copyright strike, and it was deleted completely, and so I was going to recreate it, but I just had surgery, and I'm just not yeah. in the mood. How are you feeling? I'm just, um, yesterday, I went downtown, and I went to 39th Street, and I had a performance, and it was supposed to be on a big stage, but they had a pretty small stage. So I was in the middle of 39th Street near downtown Oklahoma City with a microphone. And two big speakers reading two kids' books to primarily adults. Um, and I did a lot of walking because 39th Street is so popular and it's right there on Route 66. So, like, we had to park pretty far and walk a sizable distance. Yeah. And it was really difficult on my uh, my scars. But uh, I, I guess I did so much working out yesterday that today... I'm almost feeling back to normal. Good. So that's good. I think it's because I overdid it a little bit yesterday. So now everything's everything's peachy keen jelly beans. So that's good. But I, I'm just not in the mood for any bullshit right now. I haven't seen the Ghostbusters movie. I don't want to. No. And then I'm like, Godzilla movie. I like Godzilla, but like what has this been, like, the fifth or sixth one? Like, I... I... I I, I don't... I don't care that much. Yeah. Is the... Is the dad who half the movie whispers and half the movie screams from Friday Night Lights gonna be in it? Or that black guy who has a podcast where it's like, 
hey, this is my podcast. I'm breaking into this company. And it's like, who does, if you're going to be secretly breaking into a company, infiltrating a company and exposing its secrets, maybe don't have a popular podcast where you talk about it. Mm -hmm. But whatever. Um, so I haven't seen the Godzilla movie. There's just nothing I want to see right now. I'm just not in the mood. So instead of doing Night of a Thousand Mexican JJs, we're doing something way special. For the past six or so years, I have been collecting free movies that I find on YouTube. Okay. Free full movies. Uh, and saving it on a playlist that I made public that is, I simply titled podcast. And there's some random stuff in here. There's, um, it's called Terror in Parquet, horror film documentation, but it's just the, the compilation movie Terror in the Isles. The uh, made-for-TV movie slash backdoor pilot to Riverdale and back again where all of the Riverdale gang, Archie and Jughead and everything, come back for a reunion and they're all in their 40s. It's fucking yeah. horrible. Uh, Shocking Asia. Limp Biscuits hour-long launch party for chocolate starfish and the hot dog flavored water, which they <coughs> recorded live at the Playboy Mansion. Um, Tony Hawk did a badly animated movie in 2006 called Boom Boom Sabotage. That was so bad that it wasn't, I don't believe it was released in America. Um, a couple of Santo movies. Lloyd Bridges in 1956 was in a crime drama called Wetbacks. Oh, boy. And it, apparently it was ghostwritten by fucking Ed Wood. I found a version of Daniel the Wizard, Daniel Gersalberer. Uh, which was one of the movies that we didn't do for our uh, Summer of Bottoming, where we did the, the worst films on the IMDb list. I put Creepshow 2 on there because I've never seen it, actually. You've not seen Creepshow like 2? I saw, I've seen the first Creepshow like a hundred times. Creepshow 2, I just never did. And then there's a Creepshow 3. I don't think I'm missing anything there. No, no. Creepshow 2 isn't that good. Yeah. The only good thing about the only good thing about Creep Show Two is that one of the short stories in the anthology is The Raft. And that one I think I have seen. I don't think I've seen any of the other ones, but I've seen The Raft, and that one legitimately spooked me out a little bit. I, I, I still think the Raft is kind of a crappy story, but I had first become aware of the raft. Back in the day, I went to 7-Eleven. It was like after work. I was probably getting some beer and going home. Something like that. And I see behind the counter, because you remember this about behind the counter? Back in the day? That's where they kept the dirty magazines. Yes. And on the cover of one of the dirty magazines said in big letters, story by Stephen King inside or something like that. Nice. So I bought a copy and this like, it wasn't even good. It was like swank or screw or I forget. Really? What the fuck I assumed it was, it was, it was, it was like, like, I assumed it was like Playboy or some shit. No, no, this was like, <laughs> I, 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 I uh, uh, this was literally a dirty magazine. One of those dirty magazines that when you looked at it, you literally just felt dirty. Wow. So you bought a copy of Black Tales magazine. Exactly. Exactly. For the Stephen nice. King story, of course. Do and that any, story was The Raft. Do any gas stations still do that? The behind the counter shit? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I don't know when the last time was I saw that. Yeah, and it was a, it was just like a small booklet that was stapled in the center of the magazine, and it was the raft. One thing that I think that society has forgotten is the fact that the book Green Mile, you go to 
the Barnes and Noble, Barnes and Flobles, and you you buy the Green Mile, and it's like a nine hundred page book. But back in the day, he released it as like eight small ass books that you had to buy on their own, and yeah. that was like the coolest freaking thing I've ever seen. That you had to rush to the local bookstore to buy book four of a Stephen King novel. That was neat. I, 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 I found it very interesting, and I read The Green Mile, and I got it in the chapter books, and then did the math and realized, wow, I wound up paying a lot more than just for a goddamn <laughs> regular book. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's pretty ingenious of Stephen freaking King. And that's, that's that it. is also when I started theorizing that Stephen King and Peter Straub are the same person. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, Peter Straub, well, not only did they write a couple of books together. Yeah, they did. The Talisman and a couple others. But Peter Straub came out with a chapter book just at the same time. Ooh, okay. And I was like, fuck you. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're Stephen King, aren't you? It, it, I am still not sure. I'm still not sure. Quite honestly, I was thinking about it just now. That, like, I know Stephen King. I've never seen a picture of other guy. You know, uh-huh. never seen an interview with him. I've never seen him strung out on coke, making the weirdest Emilio Estevez movie you'll ever see. And uh, why? And why Peter Straub? Why not? Not why not Dean Koontz? Fucking Dean Koontz. Because they're both kind of on the same level. The the there's only one thing I like about Dean Koontz. I find Dean Koontz to be a real life. Garth Marenghi. Uh, but the only thing that I like about Dean Koontz is that he was hired to do a novelization of Toby Hooper's upcoming movie, The Fun House. Yeah. And he decided to go wild with it, and it's mostly a prequel of the woman who gave birth to a monstrous child and hid it. And it, and the mom had psychic powers or some shit. And it's this big, massive book that only at the end talks about how the monster is hiding in this fun house in a carnival. And because it took so long for Toby Hooper to actually find a distributor, the book came out from Stephen Koontz way before the movie and became a hit before the movie even came out. Yeah. And so then when the movie came out, it's like, oh, hey, I read this book. Let me go see the movie. Oh, God, this is in no way what was in Dean Koontz's book. No. But, like, I was going to read it, but I I just couldn't get myself to purchase a Dean Koontz. I just couldn't. Yeah. I have have read a few. Dean Koontz is, like, a, a bit better than meh. Okay, yeah. Yeah. They're, He's they're, the, uh... enter- they're, they're entertaining. They have some interesting characters. But there's just not much there. Okay. I just came up, I think this is brilliant. Dean Koontz is the R.C. Cola of horror novelists. I th- I think I have to go there. You know, it's it's not because, bad. It's not bad because nothing wrong with RC Cola. RC Cola is fine if you have it, if it's at a function and you drink it, it's good. It's all right. It's pretty nice. But no one in their right mind goes out to look for RC Cola. Yeah. And and I I was going to say it's the Pepsi. It's not even the Pepsi. But it's not horrible, so it's not shit. It's RC Cola. Yeah. Dean Koontz is the RC Cola of... I'm pretty down with that. I'm, I'm good with that. Although I, I, I great... do have to say that I liked his Odd Thomas books. 
his odd and, Thomas books. He also wrote like 35 and, different modern day Frankenstein books. Yeah. And the odd Thomas uh, movie is really a good movie. Yeah, I haven't seen that. Um, I thought for sure that you were going to pick Shock Treatment, which was on the list. Which we have Shock never done treatment. before. I, 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 yeah. yeah, I went all the way down the list. And looked everything over, and it was Dawn of the Dead that struck me first. That's a long ass one too. Because that's a long ass cut. I have yeah. not seen a cut like that before. I have seen various cuts of Dawn of the Dead, but I'd never seen one that long. So I was really interested in that. But like, motherfucking Geraldo is at the top of the list. Yeah. So, like, as soon as I looked at the list, I was like, well, there, no, no, don't do that. Look through the list. You don't know Geraldo is the best thing on the list. I also and, thought you might pick This Night I'll Possess Your Corpse because it's another Coffin Joe movie. Remember dude, when we there did were that a Coffin lot of good Joe things movie? on the list. Yeah, there's some good stuff in here. Uh, Freaking... Arch Hall Jr.'s Wild Guitar. Yeah. Because, uh, like, I'm going through it right now. There's some pretty all right stuff in here and some horrible things. Like, I'm not sure if we've actually tried to sit down and watch Turkish Star Wars. No. And Musical Mutiny's on here. That's the documentary about that band's concert at Pirate World. Oh, yeah. That we talk about every freaking summer, nude on the moon, and it's it is like a a bunch of boobies. I'm surprised it's on YouTube. Uh, three on a meat hook. Thought you'd pick that too. Yeah, Blackenstein. Still the best trailer ever. Hell comes to Frogtown, uh, or Caveman. I that was always on TV when I was a kid. Yeah, fucking that Ringo Starr. Yeah, yeah. Ringo Starr as a caveman. But this week, Bunny has chosen... Drumroll, please! Thank you, kids. Thank you. The 1988 made-for-TV special... Devil Worship! Exploring Satan Underground. Wasn't it fucking, wonderful? It was the fucking worst. I kept screaming... At the at, at my computer because I was so pissed off. But that's what to expect in the second half of the show. We're going to be exposing Geraldo Rivera's expose of Satan. Yes. And uh, with that programming note out of the way, now let's get to the actual meat of the show. It's time to do the Petty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Download today, aka Jeff. Are you ready, Bunny? I am ready. Okay, come here. Come here. Hold on. Hi, my name is Maxwell. I have a whistle. Uh, I want to talk about the 2023. The, the what? The 2022 to 2023. You need to get closer to the mic, Maxwell. Yeah, get closer to the mic. <laughs> Bob, the 2022 to 2023 mob vote. From Minecraft mob vote. Okay. Uh, 20, for 2022, it was there was there was the copper golem, uh, the moo bloom. And I no, it was the lay copper golem, and then uh, some little bush dude. I didn't pay that much attention to it. Uh, the lay one. It was between the lay and the copper golem. Uh, and the copper and the lay one. Uh, I do think that the copper golem would have been pretty nice for redstone. But, uh, the LA is also pretty nice. It gave us some more lore. Anyways, for the 2023 mob vote, 
there was three competitors. A crab, an armadillo, and, like, some sort of, like, oh, yeah, a penguin. And instead of, like, actually doing the mob vote, we, we started to, like, try to boycott the mob vote. I think we just got sick of it. Instead of getting one out of the three already perfect mobs, they only allow us one and then just and then just lock all of the other and then lock the losers into uh a vault where all the where all the losers of the mob votes go. It Wow. <laughs> There's a lot of uh things that are about boycotting the mob vote. Uh but yeah, I wanna say uh I think the crab would have been amazing. But the armadillo one. We All got right. invincible one. Thanks for checking in. Okay. And now, back to Jeff. Introduce yourself. I'm Ellen, and I got a whistle. <laughs> You want to talk about something? No. Okay. Thank you, All Eleanor. Right. So that was Eleanor, a seven-year-old, and uh, okay. Now that that's done, I, I believe that was the War of eighteen twelve. Was it not? Yeah. Yes. Yes. It okay. was. Um. So now that that's out of the way, uh, let's get to the gym. Uh, oh, wait a second. <laughs> My name is Q, and I have whatever this would be classified as. A whistle. I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> Okay, now we're back for real. Yes, Amber wouldn't do it. <laughs> okay. okay, buddy. It's Easter. The day that Jesus Christ was left for dead. But you can't keep a good deity down. Now he rises from the dead. One man mission of revenge. The Bible too. The squeak wolf. This Easter. The meek will inherit a bullet. A pretty exclusive. Rumor. Uh, Rumor has it he has a particular set of skills. He does. He does. He can turn water into wine and uh, torture people. Uh, it's Easter, but it's also Trans Day of Visibility. And so I do not see why I should have to try so hard today. This is my day. This is my most visible day. I'm a full moon today. Uh huh. In fact, if I walk in front of a, if I walk in front of Stevie Wonder, he'll be able to see me today. Yes. That's the power of Trans Day of Visibility, bitches. So, uh, you know, fuck it. How you doing, buddy? I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. But I Good. have I I'm have been thinking and let's just yeah. get it out of the way. I I I I think October we hit 10 years. That's a good place to stop. Maybe. We'll see. I mean it has been a decade. That's freaking impressive. Yes. And I'm getting kind of busy, so I understand. But also, and I'm getting kind of old. <laughs> and also, how 
dare you break up with me on Trans Day of Visibility, Bunny? Who says I'm breaking up with you? Fuck, that means this summer we have to do the fucking Fast and the Furious? Fuck you, Bunny! No, we do not. God damn it, no, we have to. Because I always said we were going to one of these summers, and if this is going to be the last summer, then fucking we have to do... God damn it! No, we Hobbs and, do not. Hobbs and Shaw is not that bad. All, huh? That's the only one I've seen. Uh, we'll do it just... Okay, if we have to do the Fast and Furious, we'll do it just like the tribute to Pedro Almodovar. No, no, no. Fuck that. We're watching the, all of the goddamn Fast and the Furious movies, Bunny. We're not, we're not, we're not chicken shitting around here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I will absolutely watch the fuck out of those movies if I have to for a podcast. It's the only way I would ever actually watch the Fast and the Furious movie. And also, I'd rather do that than the Summer of Transformers. Yeah, because ew. Although Bumblebee was a pleasant surprise, all the others fucking ew. So. I, 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 yeah. uh, well, okay, Bumblebee is a Dean Koontz novel. Yeah, I saw it's Bumblebee. Not... I enjoyed Bumblebee. I don't remember one motherfucking thing about Bumblebee. Ten minute warning. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, so I'm doing pretty good. I just had double hernia surgery. And that sucked. I purposefully didn't tell anyone at church what I was getting, I just told them, uh, I have a big surgery coming up. It's a, it's a really important one. Yeah. I'm going to have a hard time sitting down. But I never told them that I was having double hernia surgery just because these are a bunch of white people, and I'm probably the only trans person they know, and I wanted them to keep guessing. Yeah. And it's like, what happened? What happened? Oh, you had that surgery. What surgery was it? Well, what did you get? And I'm like, Double hernia surgery. Oh, I thought, oh, it, you know what? Okay. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> so it was fun to fuck people, to fuck with people. I can't fuck anyone right now. I got double hernia. But um, I booked an event that I did yesterday that yeah. was freaking amazing. Uh, I, I performed at a Trans Day of Visibility block party the entirety of 39th Street, which is right off of Route 66. Uh, near downtown Oklahoma City, and I was right in the middle of the street reading kids' books to people, and it was uh, amazing, and I loved it, and basically almost every major LBTQ organization in the entire state was there, and I met so many people and did so much networking, and let me tell you something. I went from being a quiet stay-at-home uh, dad with depression to suddenly having a shit ton of live shows and performances and I'm meeting people and yeah. I'm setting up dates and I'm being introduced to this person who knows this person. I'm trying to set up all this stuff. It is fucking exhausting. Yeah. And also because we have five <laughs> kids, most of the time my wife can't come with me and she's the people person. You yeah. know, she is my designated white person. Sometimes you just need uh, a white woman who can get angry in a white woman way, and I do not have that now. So it is so exhausting to just go to this thing and meet these hundred people and, and do all of this talking. It's, it's just exhausting. But it was really good, and uh, I talked to a lot of people, and I got some hugs, and uh, the next three weeks are going to be crazy for me because, okay, on the uh, three weeks from now, I have a variety show that I'm performing in. I'm doing two sets. I'm going to read a kid's book, and then I'm going to sing a heavy metal song. Okay. And then uh, a few days later, I have my first uh, performance of my residency. I will be performing the third Wednesday of every month. <laughs> at Point A Gallery near downtown Oklahoma City and getting paid for that. I'm a professional. And then three days after that, on 420, 
I will be doing a first of its kind historic stoner story time. Yeah. Because uh, Point A Gallery is a 420 friendly venue with an active Oklahoma Medical Marijuana Authority card, that is, obviously. Yes. But you can just vape and roll up a joint, light up a bong right there in the freaking. So uh, I've got a bunch of stoners that are going to come in pajamas, sit on the floor, bring some snacks and some pillows, and I will be reading kids' books to them. I am so freaking excited that they allowed me to do this. Cool. Of course you're not going. It's 18 and up. It, it, it's a, there's going to be such a haze of smoke. Snoop Dogg will appear. Magically, suddenly Willie Nelson appears out of the freezer. And yeah, I've got no, a lot no, of no, no. You're in You're in Oklahoma. It's definitely Seth Rogen. Or uh, or Willie Nelson. It might be Willie Nelson. Could be Willie Nelson. Yeah. So uh, because I've been making a lot of contacts and all that sort of stuff, I've got a lot of possibilities, upcoming shows. I I I will be knowing soon if I'm performing at the Norman, Oklahoma Pride Fest. Uh, I I just had an audition to be a part of the three day Oklahoma City. Pride Festival again. I was on the main stage last year, humble bread, and uh, I, I'm pretty sure I'm a shoe in for that again, but I'm not sure. And I'm already performing at the other Pride, major Pride in Oklahoma City. There's two Pride events. There's one in the beginning of Pride Month and one at the end of Pride Month. And the one at the end of the Pride Month is the big three day festival. And then the one in the beginning of the month that's on 39th Street. And the day of their Pride Parade, I will be performing three all-ages story times for kids at their big Pride Festival. I am doing things. We might be adding a second show to our New Orleans tour in October, and I'm waiting to announce a date. To I'm this close to finalizing a date to perform at a college in Oklahoma that I'm really excited about. And we are hoping, no promises, but uh, I am the official trans ambassador for rural Oklahoma Pride. And our mission is to bring Pride events to places, to like rural parts of Oklahoma that, that don't normally get Pride events. And we're trying to spread our message all over the place. So this year I'll be performing in New Orleans and I'll be performing in Memphis. And next year we are now currently actively trying to get a performance in Colorado. Oh, cool. Oh. So uh, uh, I'll be sleeping in the bed with Jeannie. You can sleep on the couch. <laughs> Period. That's what's happening there. Well, like, look at me, you know, look at me. I, I yeah. did three big shows this month. I did my one woman show this month. I had a big audition. I had a big surgery. I turned 47. I'm almost 50, but you can't tell because estrogen is a hell of a fucking drug. Yeah. Okay, wait now. What are the current dates that you actually have booked now? Oh, my God, I've got a shit ton. It's it's a. Uh... It's on my Facebook page, Storytime with Main Lynn. Well, I want to make sure I have all the updates. Okay, I'll send it to you. I, I keep updating the post of all of my uh, different dates and stuff. And also... I, I, I have a few in April, one in June, and then the, not another one until October. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll send you the updated list. Okay. And I am talking to my fucking mother again. Really? Yeah. You know, my mom and I talk. We regularly chat. I'll send her uh I'll send her things. I'll send her pictures of me. She's like, oh, you look so good. And and it, we're talking again. That's the important part. He actually said there is still a small chance that I might perform this year in Phoenix yeah. at their Pride Fest. And she said, hey. If you do perform in Phoenix, then you have a place to stay. And I'm like, I do? 
in the house with you and Joe? I better bring 10 tasers mm -hmm. and a freaking prank dart gun. Because my brother's going to try and freaking kill me. I do need a tank. Jesus. No tank. But I'm talking to my mom, and that's it. I'm not, yeah. I haven't talked to any other relatives because none of them want to talk to me. I haven't talked to my brother. Fuck him. He's the Ger Geraldo Rivera of the fam. Yes, he is. Because, oh my God, what a piece of shit Geraldo is. Oh, I hate this man. Great. And I can't wait to, to, to rip into him in the second half of the show. So, uh, that is it for Jeff, a.k.a. the Betty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Download today. Uh, we are going to be taking a short break. There's going to be some music, some fun, some excitement. When we come back, we are going to be talking about the 1988 TV special bullshit fake-ass documentary with finger quotes. Devil worship exposing Satan's undercarriage. But first, maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break? Buddy? We should take a break. I didn't ask you, Eleanor. We will be right back with more of the Pope on Phil after this. Do 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 do